Then six hours ago, we got a crazy anonymous tip that the dentist was in Friedberg, and he'd already committed his first murder. Welcome back, everybody, to This is the Police. I am your host, the bird with the badge, Officer Falcon to you, my friend. Um, and speaking of which, there's a few comments and questions that I'm going to be addressing in this video going forward. I've been, you know, answering them in the comments section as always, but um, I wanted to address them in the video so all of you get an idea why I'm doing what I'm doing going forward. So, you know, we'll talk about this here as we go along. Uh, for now, we have day number 65. Girl sets house fire to watch firefighters. Ah, oh, she's into the firefighters, huh? Eh, you know, I, I suppose, like, cops and firefighters can be kind of like a little bit of a sex symbol for certain, you know, individuals. You know, that whole heroic quality and whatnot. But, I mean, I'm not saying, I'm not saying that that's a, a free pass for her to set fucking house fires, obviously. Freeberg mail truck missing, and we have the nursing home to get cable TV. Hey, how about that? They get to watch, like, Madlock 24-7 now. How are we doing here with this little note? Aha, green thumbs all over the place, never look a gift horse in the mouth. I, I won't. As a matter of fact, I, I won't look in the mouth. I'll look away from the mouth, how about that? Anyway, let's see what we have here today. Nobody's asking for a day off, that's always really good. We have seven cops for shift A, and we also have three detectives. Pretty good. Start the day out. Alrighty, so let's see, here we have Mafia, your share. Seven dollars from the Ficus, huh? Or Ficus, one or the other. Seven dollars? Oh, please, let me go and buy myself a Happy Meal with those seven dollars. Let's go ahead and share that with the staff just so they don't, um, you know, pinch me down the line. <laughs> oh, here you go, guys. Three dollars and fifty cents split between everybody. Uh, we have a, an approved from an officer. Thank you. Um, I'll hire you afterwards. How about that? We also have approval of a raise, good, 726 per week, and we also have an approval of the SWAT team upgrade, excellent. Uh, we already did the 50% and two times a day, how about we go with efficiency 100% this time around? And then afterwards we'll probably go for the three times a day thing. And we also got a detective, good god! So we basically got all four approvals done by the City Hall. I'm telling you guys, I've been sure I've been probably getting a bit more scumbaggy, and I have a reason for that, which I'll explain pretty soon. But at the same time, it's helping me out with the City Hall. Like, I keep getting all these, like, you know, requests now approved, which is great. So now we could hire one extra detective, and we could hire one extra cop. The cops on board here are really not that great, so I might just hold off, because we have, like, seven cops per shift at the moment. Um, and we have three detectives per shift as well. I'll probably pick up the, de the detective, because we're lacking those right now. There's a lot of things we have to do, and I'll talk about those here pretty soon. Um, here we have, um, apparently... <laughs> uh, we have the creator of, uh, Minecraft over here, huh? Sure, let's go ahead and pick them up as a detective. And you'll be going over to Shift A, I want to say. Why not? And that's about it. I will hold off for the cops until we probably get somebody better at a higher professionalism rating. Uh, at some point, it's got to re uh, reset, right? Well, either way, that's been done. Let me start off with the investigations first and foremost here. This right here has been a pain in my backside for a very, very long time. However, I've been told that my... My inclination is correct. I've been saying that I don't believe it's any of these two individuals. And then we got this over here, which is apparently a dude wearing a white coat. Nobody here has a white coat. I have a feeling that I've been right about this, and I just don't have the frames to complete this um, detective case just yet. And it's got to be this guy with the white coat. So I think we hold off on that one. It's not nothing over here. A lot of people have been telling me, Falcon, you have the answer, just flip stuff around. No. I believe I... I'm right in saying we have to wait a bit more. The problem is we're not getting any enough frames, so I'm hoping to stack detectives here pretty soon and get a lot of frames coming up in the coming days here. But this has to be solved because it's been here for a very, very long time now. So, because of that, let's come over here and let's actually add Minecraft dude over here. There you go, buddy. Alrighty, so now we have this completely stacked up, and the, re the way I'm going to be doing this going forward is I'm going to stack detectives on all these cases going to the most recent one, because some of these have been here on my, you know, hanging out for a very long time, and it's really bothering me, honestly. OCD's kind of getting the best of me now, so I'm getting very, like, antsy about it. So that explains that. Let's go ahead into this um, first call, and then we'll talk more about the comments that I wanted to address for you guys. Assault Milk Factory, factory worker Vitaly Samsonov quarreled with the head of the plant and attacked him. Colleagues call the police but are afraid to intervene because Samsonov is a strong, as strong as an ox. He took us all by surprise. Um, four cops, no support. Okay, let's go with Smitty over here and let's send Kabata so we could probably hopefully level him up a little bit. Two cops I think should be ideal for this. It's only a four cop call. Over here we need a paddy wagon, so let's toss this over here to begin with. 
Uh, about two dozen Amish men chased everyone out of the city dump and blocked all access. The Amish community claims that the land belongs to them, and as evidence, they're presenting a handwritten document. An eyewitness reports that they're not behaving very peacefully, but there are hardly any weapons aside from a few pitchforks. Well, that would make sense for the Amish now, wouldn't it? Um, okay. It seems like it might be quite a few of them, and they do have pitchforks, not like legit fucking weapons, but still, you could probably do some damage with a pitchfork over here. Let's go ahead and send Magnamara Jr. with um, Strong and Bailey. Okay. Cool. Now, comments. Falcon, you've been choosing some really scumbag options recently. You're right, I have. Now, the reason why, it's because it's number one helping me out with City Hall quite a bit now. But at the same time, look at the development between Jack's character. Remember when he first started, he was like this beaten down old man, like basically in the end of his rope. Just kind of dealing with the situation. Ever since he was attacked, we'll continue out here pretty soon. Uh, milk Factory. Vitalik Samsonov is holding the plant manager over a vat of milk. The manager is crying and kicking his feet, and then he wets his pants. Oh, not that I blame him. I mean, if you're about to die, I'd probably be shitting and pissing myself too. Take him at the perp? Jesus Christ, don't pee in the milk? Children drink that, and release the hostage immediately. Let's go with the third one over here. Offender cod? Office is unharmed, and civilians unharmed. Good. Good job, guys. So, think about... Oh, you guys need backup. Shit. Um, no. I'm gonna say no. I think you guys can hold on to it yourselves. Offender cod? Office is unharmed, and civilians unharmed. Perfect. Now, think about Jack's character. After the attack, we have seen a completely different Jack. Not only just a complete, like, weird midlife crisis thing where he's like a new guy, new clothes, new hair, new everything, new cars, but at the same time, he's more of a vicious dude. He's very, like, you know, kind of savage, to be honest with you. A lot of people have mentioned savage in the comments. You're right. He's a completely different character than we first met him as. That's the reason why now I'm kind of still... My overall goal is to protect the city for sure, but now I don't mind taking more of a dick Dick approach. <laughs> I was gonna say dick hole approach for some reason. Is that I got that works out fine. I don't mind taking a dick hole approach now when it comes to like bending the rules sometimes, as long as it means my city is safe. And the re why I'm justifying that by saying that because Jack's character is now seems to be like really like you know different than we first met him. I don't mind doing it because it feels like something the new Jack would actually do. So if you're wondering like Falcon, why are you making scumbag decisions now? That's the reason why. There's been a lot of character development with Jack from the start till now. So you know it's not that I want to be a dick, but it just makes sense going with the story as it is now. Uh, we received numerous calls from visitors at the local zoo who saw a drunken zoo employee open the cheetah cage. The dangerous cats are running amok and have started to attack people. Why do you want me there? Why don't you call animal control for that shit? <laughs> I don't want to send my cops to cheetahs. Um, that's a six cop call. We only have two on standby. How about we just give this a couple of seconds here? And maybe by the time Smitty and Kabata get back, we'll send like maybe f three or four. I'm not sure how I feel like about, you know, sending cops over to like a cheetah attack over here, but we'll see. Six cops that you're asking for, huh? All right, Smid, you'll lead the attack. You'll send, let's send uh, Purdy and Kabata. Do we send Grant as well? We're going to have three cops coming back pretty soon. You know what? Let's go with four just to be on the safe side here. We still have three cops over here, and we have another call. Cemetery. Noise complaint. The caretaker at the cemetery reported strange sounds coming from the crypt. I'm afraid it's the dead finally come back. These are dark days. Another one of these weird prank calls? This one requires SWAT support, too, oddly enough. I, I don't know. I I I'm not buying this one. But uh, I'll still give you Magnamera. Eh, you know what? Let's just send them all in there. I'm going to hold on to my SWAT, though. For some reason, I'm going to say this is a poor use of my SWAT, so I'll just send those out there and whatever. Um, other comments I wanted to address really quickly was... Um, what's the other one? Mm. Oh, yeah. People want me to use um, overtime. Like, um, through my entire run so far, I really haven't had cops work double shifts. A lot of people were telling me to do that, and like all I really can say to that is I really haven't felt the need. Sure, on occasion, we've been a bit shorthanded and I've complained about it. But um, now, it feels like we're at seven cops per shift, eight pretty soon, the moment I hire the um, extra cop we have on standby, whenever I get a good cop. So, I'll try doing that only for the people with low grades, like Sabata or Bailey. Maybe we have them work double shifts to level them up faster, but um, unless I really feel like I need like an extra pair of hands next day, I probably won't be doing double shifts, but just for like the low-level people, I think it's a good idea, so I will probably be doing that going forward. Uh, just remind me, remind me, I forget. Falcon, we can remind you're recording live and we're watching it later. Well, that's besides the point, okay? A man wearing a ski mask entered the LifeWire consumer electronics store. He pulled out a gun and demanded all the money and the most expensive toaster. Uh-huh. 
It's all about the toast, man. Uh, the store security guard was fast on his feet and managed to knock the gun out of the robber's hand, but then he grabbed the sales assistant by the throat, and he's threatening to strangle her unless his demands are met. Okay. That seems kind of serious, the whole strangulation thing. Let's send Purdy. Grant. Do we need Cabana for this one? Let's send Cabana as well, why not? Get this fucker a bit leveled up here as we go forward. The door to the vault opens and there's a rustling down in the darkness. Oh, maybe it is zombies after all. I doubt it. Let's go ahead and um, shine a flashlight down there first so we know what we're up against. What the hell are you guys supposed to be? Two homeless men jump out of the darkness. They're carrying a shovel and some jewelry. It seems they don't want to give up their plunder so easily. Use the taser, hit them with the nightstick. You there, throw down your shovel or we'll bury you. Let's use the taser on these guys. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Everything fine. And we got some jewelry as well. Sell it, Mafia. Let's go ahead and sell it. Uh, the one thing I'm worried about is that we're really poor. We're really broke. I really did early on a bad job in terms of like actually acquiring money for us because I was playing it too good, so I would really not sell a lot of the items that we got and you know just other poor choices I've made early on in the run. So I do feel really poor. So I'm gonna go forward with like you know having the mafia sell shit for me so we get some money going forward. Uh, a, a man in a ski mask is in the middle of the store holding a girl by her throat and yelling at the employees. Try to sneak up behind a suspect, calm down, let go of the girl, and just leave. Pull a gun on him and make make it clear that he'd better give up. You know what? We're not joking around here. You're trying to strangle this woman? The man releases the girl and starts to run, then enters a room with a bunch of refrigerators and disappears. Mm, expand the search to the entire store. Let's check the fridges. Maybe he's hiding one of those. Ah, we got it. Perfect. Alrighty. Not a big problem there. Robinoff Casino, we have to wait for a few cops to get back. We have four now, that's good. Oh, we should have four. There they go. Uh, a firefight. A, ga a gang stormed the casino and went straight into the utility room. The eyewitness who called the police said he heard gunshots, and then the gang members started carrying out some boxes. Um, this is something we probably do need SWAT and paddy wagon for him to say, especially with gunfights, and damn, this requires a lot of cops, huh? Alright, Smitty, you take point. Do we send all four cops and just wait for Purdy, Grant, and Kabata for a future call? Or do we just send three and have, like, somebody on standby? This seems kind of relatively serious, man, so let's go with, um, Smid. You know what? Let's, let's, let's wing it this way. Let's have trust that our SWAT now at 100% efficiency is going to give us a really good hand here. So I'm going to hold on to Magnamara here, and we'll have a couple of more cops coming back. We have four on standby for now. If you guys need backup, go ahead and call it. I'll, I'll probably send you backup if, if really needed. Chinatown. Vehicular accident. The owner of a grocery c saw a car drive into the sidewalk and then knock over a girl who was playing with her roller skates. Then the bastard stopped, waited a second, then backed up over the child again. I've heard that's how the Chinese do it back home, but are we really going to let them get away with it here? Oh, good God, that's terrible. Is that... No, they can't do that in China. You know what? This is actually kind of interesting that I think about it. This is something I've watched a video of this online, oddly enough. Like, there's like uh, one of those live leak videos or something, like, you know, like... Yeah, for, you know, it's on it's on the internet, you know, if if you're on the internet, you probably see some crazy shit. I saw a video of something very similar to this, honestly. Ugh. Um, anyway, it's, it's fucked up, mind you. I, I saw the video, and I was kind of like, Jesus, I can't believe people are this heartless. But, um, four cops required for this. Let's go and send, like, um, let's send Grant and Kabata, just two. Just two. I don't think we require more than three, or more than two. And we have to send two because because of the cop hunt, they don't go out on their own. Firefight report? Everything went fine? Good. Very nice. Civilians unharmed? Hey! Automatic weapons. Sell it, Mafia. I, I've mentioned I, I feel really uncomfortable having the Mafia sell weapons to the streets because it feels like it's going to be biting me in the ass down the line, but still, I mean, I need the money. We have two calls here at one. At once. Prostitution. Frank Zucker reports that a young blonde in a short red dress approached him at the bar and offered to go to bed with him for cash. I've never laid down with a whore. Can you believe this bitch? Is that really something you call the cops for? I don't know. Imprisonment. A man with a strong Spanish accent said that a dozen people are being held against their will in the basement of a cafe. The hostess of the cafe seeks out needy immigrants, gains their trust and promises mountains of gold, then imprisons them and makes them work around the clock for stale food. According to the man who called, he was one of the slaves, but he managed to escape. The woman also has five armed guards. Ooh. Ah, uh, this is something we probably might want to wait for a few extra cops for. I'm not sure about the... Mr. Boyd, have you prepared the corpses I asked for? No, you maniac! 
That's the guy here. In case you're wondering what that's about, somebody contacted me a couple of days back, I should say, asking me for the corpse of three cops, like two males and one female, or vice versa. Yeah, I'm not sure what that's about. I'm actually quite intrigued about it, but no. I'm not going to kill my cops for some deranged lunatic just asking for it. Oh, hey, by the way, I need a couple of cops dead, if you don't mind. It's like, no, no, I do mind, you maniac. Um, alrighty. Imprisonment. Let's go ahead and send Smitty out for this one. It seems kind of serious because of the five armed guards. We'll send Strong and Bailey. Do you think that's good? I think that's good. Yeah. I'll hold on to some extra cops just in case we need another call. What about this one over here, wondering? I could send Cabana here, I guess. I mean... Do we send Cabana for this one? Eh, check it out, Cabana. Alright, it can't go alone. You know what? I'm not going to spare two cops for this weird bullshit call. Especially, let's see, what do we have here? Police impersonation. Four police officers entered the nightclub and started arresting people for having fun. They bullied the girls, and when the guys got angry, they beat them up and humiliated them. One of the one of them put out a gun into the patron's mouth and shouted at the, at, the, at the others. Another cop knocked out a man's front teeth with the butt of his gun. The club manager has serious doubt that these men are even real police officers. Yeah, they probably are, since I didn't send them out there. Um, wow, that requires a lot of cops. Probably a good thing I skipped that um whore call, you know? Now, are we getting cops back soon? No, they're barely on the way over there. That prostitution call, I don't, I don't buy it. So, I don't really care. I'll skip that one. This seems a lot more serious. I wish I had better cops for this one, too. Like, maybe a smid. But, um, it'll have to do. That's all we have available. The blonde is Frank Zucker's ex-girlfriend. She'd come to the bar with her friends, and Frank saw her and decided to teach her a lesson, of course. Damn, no new frames found, huh? God damn. Well, then again, most of the cops for that case are indeed off today, so that probably makes sense. Ugh, no new frames anywhere, huh? Alrighty, we'll just keep plugging at it. At some point, you gotta give me some new frames, game. I can't solve these cases unless you give me the goddamn frames needed. The police found a secret tunnel into the basement and descend into a very dark and smelly room. A man notices the police, shouts something, and quickly disappears inside. Climb up and find a cafe owner, chase the man, turn the flashlight, and inspect the room. Uh, let's go with that one. The police are taking enemy fire. Oh, shit. Return fire, pull out the pepper spray and attack? No, fuck that, return fire. Yeah, these guys over here shooting like actual ammunition at us and we're going to use pepper spray on them? No, no. Go full force on that one, that's fine. Alrighty. So far, hey, everything went pretty well today, right? I mean, other than the fact that we can't get any more frames. End of the day? End of the day. Oh, you guys need backup, huh? I got no backup for you guys, I, I apologize, refuse. Did it work out for you? Offenders caught, officers unharmed, and civilians unharmed. Thank God. Good job, guys. Let's end our day. Alrighty, that went perfect. Everything was answered. The one that we skipped was a, a false alarm, so I'm not even hating on that. Um, alrighty, so. Overtime we're talking about, right? Kabata, work tomorrow. And maybe Bailey 260? What do you guys think? Who's in shift B? No, no, we'll do Kabata. We'll have, um, wow, eight cops for that shift. That's fine. Yeah, we want to level up Kabat a bit more. Maybe Bailey? Whatever. Order to work tomorrow as well. And let's go ahead and... End our day. Day 66. Cutscene time. Mr. Boyd, I am Agent Avrahami, and this is Agent Roberts. You'll have to come with us. Uh, what now? Oh, please get dressed, Mr. Boyd. We'll wait for you in the car. Mr. Boyd, did you hear what I said? You know what? You boys can go to hell. I'm not going anywhere. Not right now, at least. You can come down to the police station during regular hours. You can't just come to my house while I'm sleeping, pull me out of bed without any breakfast. Right now, the only place I'm going is back to bed. I'm closing the door now, and if you... <laughs> Jack! What's all this? I told everyone what a great sport you are and how fun it would be to play a little joke on you. Where's your sense of humor gone? Ethan, it's five in the morning. At this hour, the only thing that'll get me laughing is one of you feds slipping on a banana peel. <laughs> well, what did I tell you? He's such a joker. You're getting old, Ethan. You're getting fatter, Jack. And you're getting boring. And you're getting fired. Fine. You win. But you're still a snappy dresser, Jack. As I'm sure you can guess, we've got an assignment here in Freeburg. Come on, let's go. We'll fill you in at the scene. Oh, and uh, I really am glad to see you, Jack.
You have no idea. Meet Jack. And this is Agent Shiresh, Agent Kumaro, Agent Ellis, and Agent Dixon. Jeez, how many men did you bring? Eleven people on my team, plus two heads, but they're still asleep at the hotel. We got to Freeburg a couple hours ago. Uh, actually, I was asked not to communicate with the local police, at least until the press conference, but, well, you're a friend. And by the way, you're lucky you didn't have time for breakfast. Now, the press are calling him the dentist. Just like every other fucking maniac, he's got his own stupid nickname. We spent 19 years chasing this guy. The M.O. is always the same. He kills young women in a small town, drops out of sight, and then reappears on the other end of the country with a fresh set of victims. He kills without hesitation, stuns the victim, then strangles her while she's unconscious. And that's when things get fun. He uses a power tool to ream out the dead girl's mouth. For five years, we've heard nothing. That's the longest break he's ever taken. Then six hours ago, we got a crazy anonymous tip that the dentist was in Friedberg, and he'd already committed his first murder. They even told us the address of the house. It looks like our anonymous tip came from the dentist himself, but that hasn't been verified yet. Oh, uh, Dixon, don't go anywhere. So, Jack, listen. Dixon will take you to the station. You can bring your people up to speed. I'm looking forward to full cooperation, and it would be great if you could bag a criminal like this before you retire. A nice farewell. You know what I'm saying, Jack? Yeah, a nice farewell. And Dixon? Mr. Boyd will tell you where to take him. Come on, look alive. You're the police chief's driver today, if that's good enough for you. I'll come around to see you tonight. Buy some beers, huh? But not that piss you normally drink. That stuff gives me wicked heartburn. All right, man, this game, I'm, t you know what, I, I, I normally enjoy a lot of the games that I play for you guys, obviously others I wouldn't be playing them. This game, I I'll be honest with you, this is like one of my favorite games I've played in a very, very long time, like really up above everything, like, it keeps just adding so much as you go forward, like, before the accident, I thought it was just like a regular police game, you know, you send cops down on occasion, blah, 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 like a police sim management game, and then we had that accident, and everything kind of turned around, and now we're getting thrown like this weird, like, detective, I mean, not detective, but like, dentist, homicidal maniac dude has been killing for years now it's just it's always something new added to this as you go forward so impressive anyway guys we're gonna wrap it up here for this episode i hope you enjoyed it leave a thumbs up i will catch you next time